We begin with this. Ibrahim al Kosi was a former staffer to bin Laden and former detainee at Guantanamo. He was released to the Sudan. Now he is an al-Qaeda leader in Yemen. Colonel Alan West is with us. All right, Colonel, lots of ground to cover with you this morning. Start with the Gitmo returnee. The news just coming out. Your judgment, please. Well, good morning to you, Stuart. And uh, what we have to come to understand once again is that these are unlawful enemy combatants that we're releasing back onto the battlefield. And when you think about the position and the prominence that they gain by having been released from being held by the Americans, they are immediately put into leadership positions, as you see with this yeah. gentleman uh, with Al Qaeda in Yemen or Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. We know that about 30 to 33 percent of those that are released from Guantanamo Bay return back to the battlefield. We experienced some of that in my two and a half years when I was in Afghanistan. And it makes you ask the question, what happened to those five senior Taliban leaders that released the cutter? Extraordinary stuff. You were fighting these guys on the battlefield and they'd been released from Gitmo and they were firing guns at you? That's extraordinary. Okay, I've got the latest, hold on a second, Alan. I've got the latest Fox News poll of likely Republican voters, South Carolina. It shows Trump surging after his Muslim comments. Support 30% before the comments, 38% afterwards. Now, he defended his comments on Bill O'Reilly, the factor, last night. Roll tape. Maybe it's not politically correct to do it, but somebody had to bring it up. It's a temporary ban on not everybody, but many. I would set up a system to see who qualifies to come in, who doesn't, until we come down with the answer as to what's happening with the Muslim population. All I'm doing is bringing a situation to the forefront that everybody is talking about and nobody wants to do anything about it. This is about security. It's not about religion. Uh, now, he, he appeared to walk back the original statement a little bit there, Alan. He was saying it's going to be temporary, not shutting out everybody. He's bringing this to our attention. You're a Republican. Are you one of those Republicans who is going after Donald Trump and... Uh, you know, telling him, look, uh, stop it. We don't want this. Are you one of those Republicans? Well, first of all, my existence is not predicated upon agreeing or disagreeing with Donald Trump. And it's very easy in the uh, light of what just happened a week ago to tap into an emotionalism and an emotional response. But I think the most important thing is we have to look at a policy. First and foremost, you know, I was not aware of a fiancé visa uh, program. We need to look at that program that Tashfeen Malik used to uh, get into the United States of America. We know that she used an uh, erroneous address, and why was that not for thoroughly checked? Remember, it was about uh, three weeks ago, you and I were discussing the refugee issue, and I told you that we need to look at single military-aged males, and they should probably be excluded from entry into Western civilization. And we know that that's an issue based upon what happened in Paris. And we probably need to look at single military-aged females now because we know that single females were involved in Paris and definitely what happened in San Bernardino. And we need to look at the list of countries that are on our terrorist watch list or countries that have terrorist groups operating. That's how you develop a policy that uh, yeah. that's what leadership is about, not tapping into the emotions of the American people at this time. I, I suspect that as Trump surges, and he is surging, this is very preliminary numbers, but I suggest mm -hmm. that as he's doing that, maybe some of the opposition to him will be a little less uh, sharp and harsh. Colonel Alan West, thanks for joining us, as always, sir. Pleasure. Thank you very much.